So the first step I want to do, and it doesn't matter if you can't see it too much on the screen, but it'll be there to prompt me, is I just try to think of the SIL database as a container of data. And data from flock A, B, C, D, the stud breed of uh, data, comes into that container. And where they share RAMs, we've got a bit of a benchmark between different flocks, so we can start giving a cross-flock information. And where they don't share RAMs, we can still rank the RAMs from within that flock. Which is in, if they've got, um, they can still figure out their own uh, flock, which is the best RAM, what's the um, poor RAM within that. So with that container, we have a look at um, pedigree and performance data and, uh, information to lead into breeding values. So now we're getting an estimate of how the merit of that animal as a parent, not just the way it looks in front of you, but what progeny they're going to make. The next layer is to add in what's the, um, what's the weighting, how much importance should I put on this trait over this other trait, and so we put economic weighting about how um, how much money that's going to make you on farm. And we use a, um, a scientist in the back of the room to help us devise, devise those indexes. But it comes in a dollar value now. So you know that more money, more money, good thing, right? So indexes should be simpler to understand of how to judge the merit of a, of a ram in front of you. The next layer that we've got is percentile bands. Now you might not have seen this as much, but we do have it on our websites and we are looking to provide that for young rams as well. Um, but it gives you a judgment about what range you could expect, where the average is, and, what, uh, and then you've still got your own choices to make within that. So um, this has all been made possible because a lot of investment we did for you guys as, as commercial farmers trying to make this uh, one genetic evaluation. So that means all flocks, all rams are in the one evaluation. There's not like a, you can't, there's not little separate analyses all over the different places. So just one place where... Um, all rams and all flocks are evaluated, and it's weekly, so it's always up to date, uh, depending on the latest information going in. And out of that one evaluation, we've also put in um, these standard indexes. We were responding to farmers telling us, or commercial farmers telling us, that um, when they went from one flock to another, there was a different report, different evaluation, different numbers to consider, different things put in. It's a bit of a, bit of a dog's breakfast to sort of know what to compare from this flock to another. So on your behalf, we, we really um, work towards having these standard indexes, so a standard one for maternal worth, and I think it's probably in your handout too, if it's a bit um, hard to read on the screen. Um, where maternal, a maternal ram, okay, so 50% of the, uh, with this index, 50% of the selection pressure or the gain you're going to get, the profit you're going to get it, is out of growth. 28% is going to be on the emphasis on reproduction, how many more um, lambs and stuff that it'll have. There's 13% emphasis there on survival, so that lamb has got to get up and survive, but also the mother's got to be good at rearing that lamb. And regardless of whether or not we think and make a lot of money out of it at the moment, there is 7% slice or inf um, emphasis on there in wool, because we still, you know, it's a cost to our business and we still get some money and some revenue out of that. We also have a 2% slice in there for um, adult size, because we realise, as we put the accelerator on growth, we definitely get, well, we, we tend to get bigger adult ewes. The only measure we have for how much it's going to cost you to feed them is size, so we need to put a little break on there just to make sure that the adults won't get um, excessively high for the amount of extra growth we're putting in. So anyway, um, we're still going to get a little bit of adult size increase there, so um, it's about a 2% increase we expect with the break we've put on, so it's, it's, it's not um, a complete plan. We're talking about terminals today, so just switch to the right-hand side and think about the terminal side. Of course, so much of the value we're going to get out is around growth. So 71% is um, going to be in response to the growth of the land. 21% is put on meat yield. When we talk about meat yield, we mean the fleshiness of that animal over an, well, for a given carcass weight. Okay? So it's about the extra flesh it's got per amount of bone and size it is. Because growth's otherwise covered under that other chunk. We still need that lamb to get up and live, so survival is still in there. We know that if we didn't put survival in these um, indexes, that if we ignored it, or we went hard on growth in these other traits, we would start to slip back on survival, and we can't have that. You need those lambs to survive. So um, regardless of the debate around how heritable survival is, or uh, I think of it as trying to find multiple ways not to die, um, it still needs to be in our index so that we don't slip back and we don't um, you know, find ourselves having really you know, fast-growing lambs but fewer of them turning up. Now, we still respect that breeders will have their own feature things that they need to put in, um, and there may be feature traits that you're looking for that are above and beyond these um, core ones. So 
such uh, examples are meat. So in the maternal side, you might have heard I didn't mention meat in the core. Um, but if you are looking for meat in your maternal side, you can find a, a breeder um, who can present New Zealand maternal worth plus meat. Um, again, in North Island, if you're in a facial excrement area, you may find that's a really absolute must have. So um, it's not relevant, or not, well, it's beginning to be more relevant, but it's not in all our South Island um, stub breeders' minds, but it certainly might be up here, so you can add that in to your index. Or worm feck is another important one that people see. Now, these aren't mainstream because not everyone's measuring them, but they are those added features. Now, if you still want to have a custom index, which is a whole lot of um, different special things, you can still request that. But now, at least when you go from one flock to another, you can expect to see the core traits. Um, so you can at least see how this flock is relating to that flock um, under the same evaluation. Confidence in figures. How do we have confidence in those figures being right? Um, so for those that have heard me speak before, I do put this slide up quite a bit, but I just think it illustrates the point of what the CPT's got to do. So if I think about some rams here, and they're all just um, in, uh, denoted here by an X, and uh, the average weaning weight is the graph up the side there, and I've got flock A, B, and sorry, behind the FMG, I've got flock C and D. Um, I want to go find a fast-growing ram. Where, which flock am I going to go to? I want to get lambs that are going to be really heavy at weaning. Which flock am I going to look at getting a ram from? C, the one behind the FMG. Righto. Cool, but I don't know. Is um, flock C just a better feeder? Is it a least challenging environment? Does it have the stocking rate that I have? I don't really know whether or not, how, there might be a number of reasons why those rams are different. Now the only real way, well, one pretty good way I can find that out, it's hard to see, but I've just put in a yellow ram, and he is uh, represented now on each of those farms. So he is the benchmark, or the link sire. Now I can align those different rams, correcting for those different feeding levels, correcting for those different um, conditions or challenges, and now I can see actually, if I wanted to find a ram that's going to get me some really heavy uh, weaning weight lambs, I'm going to be looking at flock A or flock D, which I was completely just missing before. This benchmarking is the whole point behind the progeny test. Breeders can still achieve it by shearing rams themselves, um, and, but it's, you know, we're helping the industry with the progeny test that we do. So the aims of our progeny test from the, the hub, what we've been doing since, um, when did we start at Neville? About 2000 and 2002, so some time now, 15 years. We have been, we've designed it around increasing the genetic merit of New Zealand sheep and providing these really valuable links, especially between different breeds. It's also been used to develop new traits and it's been a really good resource for research. It's done a really good job in that. And here I'm talking about the linkage. Um, each of these different breeder groups might be well linked if they share a ram between them. But it's harder to convince them to shear a ram across a breed or a, across a very um, important philosophy. It might be, you know, it's hard for an FE breeder to bring in a ram that doesn't have um, FE tolerance. So it's harder to get those connection, connections to shearing. And that's where the CPT has come into play. So it's been able to get um, at least getting some. Now I've got a linkage here all the way from a Perindale all the way over to a Texel because um, through this hub site I've got a, a ram that's been shared with another ram that's been shared with another ram. So we've got benchmarking between those. And that's the whole point of our CPT, the way we've run it. So what we've achieved in the 15 years is pretty good. We've got um, 350 odd sires have been assessed out of 42 different breeds. We're doing 22 new ones every year. We have to make them by AI and that occurs in March and April, just, um, just background information. And then we had a review in 2015. And I said, that's really good, you've done a great, doing a good job, it is supplying to the industry and we're, gonna, we're going to keep doing this. this is, we're still going to keep delivering this. But we've got an opportunity to test more rams. Test them younger, so we're actually going to help that genetic gain ramp up by getting more information on those young rams and can start selecting them still while they're alive rather than finding out how good they were when they died already. Um, we're going to get into more commercially relevant environments, so we'll take away this idea that it's only going to be valid in a research place. And we're going to get partnerships with the industry to get this penetration across um, and to, to make sure we're communicating well and that we're doing the, answering the kind of questions you need um, and that we're getting you guys turning up like you are today from breeders and also from commercial farmers. So that's the, that was our opportunity. Um, and so we've been implementing this since 2016. This was the first site to start with the Next Generation site, so it's done really, um, been a really good um, flagship for us. And we have, quite proud of this last year in 2017 mating, 
We've had 186 rams that we'll be following. They're on seven sites. Only one of them is a research farm. Six are actual commercial farms, like this one. And three of them include cadet training farms. So we're actually getting um, a communication with these younger, um, younger guys coming into farming as well, so they're understanding technology and genetics. So quite proud of that we stat. But let's think also about terminal size. So yes, in our hub we are um, including terminal size in that. Um, in that. But we also think that um, there's more opportunity here. Now you won't be able to read that poster, it was just um, it's very hard to read, but I'll just pick on to the next one with a wee excerpt of it um, um, raised up. Well, so this is a wee study that was commissioned um, out of Waratara Genetics, and they're down south. But they wanted to see what, um, what the value to you guys as a commercial farmer would be of um, including the terminal sire. And they found that with um, working with Abacus Bio, where um, Neville Johnson comes from, is that the 10%, maybe 10% of the use of the high merit um, terminal ram is adding 6,000 to the bottom line. Now, if I, you wouldn't have seen the stats, but um, if I look here, I know that it was a 3,000 um, ewe, 300 hectare, 140% lambing, and 18 kg carcass weight. So sort of what we would expect to be in the middle. And this is the kind of uh, value they were getting out, like $1.98 per ewe, extra money, extra profit. If they increase it up to 40%, which someone has said, they're looking to improve that profit up to around 27000 um, just by making that decision. Okay, So pretty cool. And this is based on the... Uh, land value from some time ago, and I think it's actually gone up more recently, so um, it's actually even looking more positive than this. So really great opportunity with terminal size. Well, how do we look, or when we, how do we look at um, how terminal size are connected and benchmarked? We found that there's probably a real opportunity to do better here. Um, of the 240 that I've got recorded on, um, on SIL, I've only got 66 of them connected for New Zealand Terminal Worth, so that campaign we put out. Um, that's, I've got 121 connected for survival, cool. I've got 154 connected for growth, so pretty good. But only 81 connected for meat, so a real opportunity to improve things here. And uh, it's a really good um, opportunity to think about a terminal sire next generation site, and it's really been the impetus behind um, you know, setting something like this up. Again, tiny writing, so you won't see that, but let's... Um, I want to talk a little bit about the results that we've got from here. Like because with this Mariah Totra site, we're also working with PML, and um, we hadn't, um, still didn't quite understand the saleable meat yield components. It needed to get a translation, a calibration of that data. Another reason to bring on this, um, to site our next generation um, site here. We've had to, um, you know, we're getting that as part of this progress as well. So. Although that data um, being on the harvested animals is not yet infecting the sill values, it will by next year. But what we can do is present the top 50% um, as we agreed we would with the breeders that put their uh, rams in. We talk about the top 50% for um, a within site um, terminal work. You, won't, you can't see it on this screen, but that's okay. The point being is that we rank these rams on, um, it's, it's New Zealand terminal worth, but it's under PML saleable meat conditions, okay? So we've called it PM terminal worth. Once our meat module is all sorted by next year, we'll be putting it into just New Zealand terminal worth. And we've ranked the rams from um, 1 to 20, there was 40 um, in the 2016 um, uh, project test. And then we also, we know that the terminal worth index is made up of um, wean weight, carcass weight, the amount of lean that we've got um, on the carcass, the amount of fat that's in there, uh, loin, shoulder and hindquarter um, yields. And so we can see, um, well, what we've found really is that, that terminal growth is really driven strongly by the growth in this, in this way, but we have been able to rank them and you'll see some of getting to that top by being, um, with having differences in lean yield and stuff as well. So there's a variety in there. I mean, there's lots of different ways to get to the top. That's the point. We've also measured IMF and it's pretty hard to see there. But so I mean, we know, we've just had that story about we've done a great job selecting for lean um, and along the way have we dropped our ability to keep the IMF in. And what I can sort of see from this graph um, at the end is that um, if they're high, the high breeding valve for um, IMF they're to the right and if they're low, they've got lower IMF they're to the left. So, that we perform. so I think about the six one down, it's a little bit low on IMF, really high in lean yield, so that sort of fits what we would normally expect. But I can also see some rule breakers. 
I can see a ram at the, at the third one there. He's pretty strong on lean, but he's also got a bit of IMF in there. And that's really exciting for us that we're going to be able to hit this novel traits going to come through that we can have a look at and select for. We can still get some growth and lean yield that we need, as well as getting some tastiness and IMF and juiciness still in there. So um, that's our, our first crop of results, really, to, to share with you. Um, and I think um, I often get asked this question so, what is the value for the commercial farmer? That's, I mean, breeders understand now that they're going to be able to select differently based on these results. But what's that going to look like for you guys as a commercial farmer? And what we would hope that you'd see is faster genetic gain for your breeders will be more profitable rands for you to buy. Um, you'll have more confidence in the genetic uh, value predictions, so we'll have more data behind um, EBVs and indexes and also profit um, behind those. Because we're measuring these values in an environment that's similar to yours, it's a commercial reality, you can have more confidence that this should pan out into uh, the environment that you've got at home. And we're really getting this opportunity to look at meat quality uh, as a value add for terminal sires. So um, I mean that's the low-hanging fruit you're going to get from this. And hopefully why you care. That's the why you care slide, okay? And, um, but for us, for, to get more value realised out of this, and it's a whole, one of the big impetus behind this day, is trying to get this community of interest uh, behind this next generation site, which is not, we've had the breeders talk to them this morning, but also talking to you this afternoon and getting feedback and closing this loop about you know, what we want, um, some information from processes and stuff as well. So uh, this is where more value can be realised and we're excited to be part of that.